We are live. Friday Night Live. I'm sorry I haven't been streaming a lot lately, guys. It's, uh, long story short, I've been really, really busy at work, uh, family stuff, and uh, I'll just let you know, guys, I can't stream tomorrow night. It is me and my wife's anniversary, and I promise to take her out, so we're going to go do that stuff, but I don't have to work uh, till Monday night, so I'm going to do a, another stream Sunday night as well. We got to knock out all these giveaways, so definitely i haven't forgot about it we got to do that and uh let me go ahead and get the chat popped out uh here and i got a bunch of cool stuff in this week not gonna lie and um i want to show all that stuff to you i got some new balsa crank baits uh from a couple guys i got a really special uh mega bass vision 110 in um uh, got a pretty old school swim bait and then uh, I got an order from the Hookup Tackle with some new baits I, I don't have and you may have never seen. So um, we're just going to hang out here and uh, do a little fishing Q&A and, and whatever uh, we can tonight. Uh, so, yeah, I'm wearing long sleeves. I couldn't find <laughs> couldn't find a good clean shirt while I go. So I've, I've got the beard all, all, all trimmed up and everything. So... Uh, withdrawal is good, Michael. It was pretty rough few days, but uh, uh, we're doing good with it. Chewed a lot of gum. Ken, I will give you a close-up look at the Six Sense Frog. Uh, let me grab it right here real quick. It's really, I mean, it's a solid black one, so there's not a whole lot of detail you're going to see in it. So, you know, I've showed it off several times now. But here's the six cents. This is a prototype too. The the new ones are, are going to change a little bit, but uh, and that's the frog. You see, it's got got a nice hook gap. I've trimmed the legs. I fished this at Lake Gunnersville actually last fall. Um, kind of narrow. Uh, good looking frog there. See if his camera will focus. There we go. But that is the six cents frog. But I also got a new frog. I don't work outside Big Red Bass. I work inside, bud. And it's still hot, too. What's up, Scott Henson? What's up, Cameron Porter, my man? Dude, it's got to be like your bedtime, unless you're going fishing tomorrow. Yep, Kyle, there was some Six Sense Axis on the website. I was able to grab a few myself, so. William Johnson, the best fishing line. Personally, I'm a Sunline guy. Uh, I use it quite a bit. I use the Canine Fishing Line. Um... And also, um, I would also, uh, you know, braid wise, I'm a I'm Power Pro J Braid guy. Uh, just gonna let's see, Michael Man. I think we can agree, Mil Milf shouldn't go with the three pound minimum again. Boar fest, dude. I love the three pound minimum. So here's a question, Michael Man. All you guys complaining that MLF was a dink fest. Now they go to a three pound minimum. Now it's boring. Pretty much all fishing tournaments, if you're fishing for a five bass limit, are going to be just as boring. So, uh, I don't know, man. Um, I, I like Major League Fishing. I'll be honest, I really enjoyed the Heavy Hitters Tournament. There were some giant bass caught. Uh, Jordan Lee is a freaking stud, man. Uh, if there's a big money tournament, uh, that's a guy I would not want fishing it. Because he always seems to uh, pull it out. Um, and it was actually a two pound minimum, Michael Man, just FYI. But <clears throat> dang, Bob, you gonna be okay, man? Dude, that frog is gonna come out soon. I know I've seen a few uh, colors uh, that are coming. It's gonna be really nice. So, what's up, Simon? Oh, so three pound minimum on the finals? Okay, I did, I thought it was two pounds the whole th time, but uh, man, I, I thought the guys caught them at uh, Harris Chain for in the summer really really well. Obviously, there's some giant fish caught, um, especially uh, you know eight fifteen and nine two, uh, and that big fish that Jordan Lee caught. Holy cow! What a crankbait bite! That was unreal. It about ripped the rod from him. Uh, I didn't watch a whole lot of the Bassmaster. I just been doing other things during the day. Uh, so I didn't get to watch that too much, but I'd like to see Canterbury win. Um, and my buddy Mark Menendez, he had some back issues, had to pull out. So what's up, Brian?
so just so you know guys know if you didn't see the waterland sunglasses uh, these were designed with casey uh from six cents his brother garrett and ben milliken uh, i've been wearing them for about three and a half months now and they're really nice uh, I, I think i used the wrong cleaner on these it smudged them but uh very clear i feel like the terminator but uh they fish good, they feel good, and they're on sale now, waterlandco.com, uh, and you can use my code BAITMAN to get 10% off, and it brings them down to 100 bucks. So they're normally like $150. I like them pretty well. And, you know, just so we're clear, uh, they are sponsoring me and the channel, uh, but uh, I used them for quite a while before I accepted any kind of sponsorship deal from them, and uh, I liked them. And uh, I'm a Costa guy. I've, I've always wore Costas and Oakleys. And those do it just as good as job, if not better, in some areas. So, hey, um, why not? You know what I mean? And I'm going to get some sunglasses in, and we're going to do a giveaway. I'm going to give away a pair of Waterlands and probably a hat, too. So I'm really excited about uh, that partnership as well. You know, if Casey is involved, I'm probably going to be involved in it, too. So, But... Uh, Let's talk about some baits. It is a bait show. We're going to talk about baits. Uh, so first thing I got in, I got a, this is a JDM uh, Color Vision 110. And I keep um, getting special color mega bass. Um, yeah, you follow showing out good. Uh, they are polycarbonate lenses. I personally, I like a blue mirror. Uh, I like green mirror as well, uh, but uh, the blue mirror, if you don't know what to buy, that's a really good one, especially like Kentucky Lake, a lot of times we're fishing a lot of open water, uh, so I like the blue mirror. If you're fishing clear water, blue mirror is really good. Um, I like the green mirror in some stained water. If I'm fishing up shallow a lot, um, overcast days, I like the green mirror pretty well. Yeah, I mean... I, you hit it on the head. Uh, I like the Costas, but the ones I like are 250 bucks. I'd rather spend 100 to 150. Uh, they got a three-year limited warranty on them. Uh, they'll take care of you. So, thanks, man. Thanks for hitting the like button if you're new to the channel. Uh, I've never been in a stream or seen this. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and also smash that. Yes, we do, uh, Cameron. I text uh, your grandpa. I texted him my new cell phone number, so I'm ready to do that. But this is a new color, Vision 110. I landed off Facebook. Check this guy right here. This is, uh, I believe it's called uh, Spawn Cherry. So it's kind of of a, a metallic silver. Oh, snap. I just got my finger in that with a little bit of pink in there and that red eye. And I got a little white belly, man. I like, I like that right there. Uh, especially for clear water. Uh, we got this in, in case I go up north to chase a little bit of the small jaws. Really good looking bait, man. It's a, it's, it's, it's a new JDM color, so I decided to snatch it up. Same guy I got uh, that red and chartreuse one from. He had it, so thanks again. Best Cinco rod, I just like a 7 foot medium heavy, man. No matter what brand, that seems like to be all around best deal for Cinco. So, uh, let's see, where else do we want to start? I do not take the split ring off the front, Joe. Uh, I kind of feel like this. If bait manufacturers put a split ring on the bait, then that's probably the best thing for the bait. If they don't put one on there, sometimes I'll put one on there, but for the most part, I don't. Best JDN retailer in the States? The Hookup Tackle Man, without a doubt. Um, Carolina Fishing Tackle is really good, uh, but... Uh, I believe the hookup tackle and what we'll, I tell you what we're gonna go over what they sent me uh, I ordered this week and it got here in two days uh, you know I'm not affiliated with them even though I really like Ben he's been on a Bateman raw uh, I ordered some stuff couldn't find anywhere and it was here in two days so why did that 110 not have a split ring I don't know good question Maybe it's because it, this one here doesn't have a split ring as well. Um, 
these are both JDM baits too. So this is uh, the Akatoro. This is a JDM exclusive color. And this is the GLX Spawn Cherry. That's an exclusive uh, JDM color. That's probably why. The Jackal Blade Walker. It's actually a Tackle Blade Walker. Uh, I don't have one of those yet. Uh, those came in right after I made this order. So, <clears throat> What's up, Silas? So here's what I got from the Hookup Tackle. Small order. Uh, first is a frog. And this is, speaking of Tackle, this is the tackle uh, duck roker so it is very similar to uh, the transporter frog that was made by paycheck and I like this color this is uh, this is kind of a, a bone it's a hologram bone so uh, the bottom of it is kind of clearish and it really looks like that old um, repo man color that was uh, a bone with the clear on it. Uh, I think it was called Bone Crusher. And uh, but if you see the back end of this, it's got this. Uh, oh, it's got a damn nut sack on it. It's kind of like a set of truck nuts on your frog. But actually, in this little bulb, um, it's got a rattle. And so it's supposed to. They say simulate. The kick knocker sound, it's not cl quite as loud, not even close, but it does have a big knock to it. So I would, I think this would be a great walking op open water, water frog. You can hear that rattle on it. But uh, that is the Duck Roker uh, from Tekel. I'm uh, pretty excited about that. It's got the transporter body from the old paycheck bait. I definitely know it'll walk good uh, catching fish. Uh, very interesting on the back end though very loud I don't know how good of a mat frog this would be because of this thing dragging in the back I could see this collecting a uh, vegetation but it does got a nice set of nuts on it got some frog nuts but uh, I like trying new stuff on as always um, I do want to get that tackle blade walker they look hookup tackle literally posted that right after I'd made this order but it's all good. Could be an issue. Uh, I don't know. I don't know about the short strikes. And I'm not the best frog fisherman in the world, so. We'll hang this up on the frog wall when this thing's all said and done. I'm just going to hang it up somewhere for now. I've got so much crap in the bait room right now, I don't have room for anything else. Uh, like, okay, so let's see. Yep, TW has the blade. The problem about TW right now, it's taking two guys uh, two weeks to get an order. I don't have time to wait two weeks. And I understand why everything's happening. They're real backed up. Uh, if we would just open the United States back up, we would get our tackle really quick. So, Dude, we talk about all kinds of stuff on Bateman on Friday night, Saturday night. Nothing is off limits except politics and religion. I really try not to dab into those two. Um see what else we got I got some mega bass more mega bass uh, a lot of guys have been asking if I had any of these and I've been looking for them uh, the six inch mag draft and I got the two desirable colors uh, white back shad and the six inch mag draft which I actually have the big daddy over here the eight inch and we can do a comparison on that in just a second so there's a six inch mag draft and then I got the albino shad. And I'm not a huge, just solid white swim bait guy. But uh, these are the ones everyone's always getting. And says that's the deal. So I've had some 6-inch mag, dra mag drafts. Didn't have a lot of luck. But I got these for some different fisheries. Um, they have them in stock there to hook up tackle. Uh, let's get that 8-inch one down real quick. So I don't check out my ass. Oops. So that so here's the eight inch mag draft, which I've thrown quite a bit. It's a pretty daggum big bait. And it's still got that magnetic hook hanger. But that one has some teeth marks on it. It's been uh, smashed a few times. These big baits, though, it takes a pretty good sized fish to eat it. Um, but you can even tell. Let's see, I'll get a six I'll get this six inch out of the package. I'll see if 
but these are usually pretty easy to get out because I want to I like to I don't have a good place to store these swim baits so I want to be able to hang them back up just for the time being so let's get this six inch in yeah Oop. so same kind of deal the six inch uh, definitely smaller but it's got that same magnetic system in here these uh these mag drafts are very soft I mean they're not quite as soft as the babe but uh, thanks fishing with g-man uh, I love the hat too it's actually become one of my favorites uh, that's the thing about six cents their hats are the shit so that eight inch is a heck of a lot bigger than the six inch on the mag draft uh, it feels a lot bigger than two inches uh, personally my wife's used to eight uh, but uh, I don't know if she'd like six but if I'm throwing this I've got a uh, this mag draft here I've got a Douglas uh, I believe it's a 784 swim bait rod I throw this thing on it feels it it's perfect it's great for Ospreys it's great for the mag draft uh, the bigger ones but the six inch, man, you do not need a really expensive swim bait rod to throw a six inch mag draft. It doesn't weigh very much. I think it weighs less than an ounce. It says one and a quarter ounce, but I don't even think it weighs that. It's more to one ounce. Uh, you can use whatever you throw a football jig on, like a seven three medium heavy. Uh, that'd take care of that, or a seven six medium heavy. You may not even need that big of a rod. It's not a very heavy swim bait at all. It's really a shallow water deal too. That's, uh, that's, so I grab some of those mag drafts, get them while you can, uh, because these two colors are always sold out, and uh, when I see they had them in stock, I figure I'd grab them. I used to have some, and I don't know where they went. More than likely, I gave them to somebody, because that's usually what I do when someone asks for something locally, and I have it, I just give it to them. Put this thing back up on a swim bait wall here. Big old mag daddy mag draft. I don't use stinger hooks, but uh, I watched a video with Crazy Bass Fisher. He has a great YouTube channel, and uh, he was showing an awesome way to re rig those things with a stinger hook more in the middle of the bait. So, dude, uh, won't work well in Connecticut. You never know, man. You never know because, man, bass are going to eat. I don't care where you live at, they're going to eat. So, uh, Lux and Divine have the same blank. I don't think so, but I could be wrong. Uh, I do know the Divine and the Sensory are basically the same blank. So, what's up, Zach Levy? Uh, so here's what else I got: and more Mega Bass uh, from the Hookup Tackle. This is a cool bait. Uh, this is the Over Rev Concept Burning Shad. This is a wake bait that's meant to be burned. And uh, it's not a huge bait. I'm kind of getting into more of these waking style crankbaits. Um, I love the speed wake. I wanted something a little bit smaller profile. And I really like this because it's not very big at all. And I love that, that translucent. Got that little pink. This is cotton wakasaki. But you notice how thin this bait is. It really, to me, imitates those little bitty yellowtail uh, minnows here on Kentucky Lake and some other places uh, more of a finesse wake bait. I really like this uh, This thing is only like two inches long uh, I should say here on the package. Oh, I can't read Japanese so uh, linear bearing oscillator system uh, So you see this little bearing in the middle here that goes back and forth It's supposed to keep this bait balanced so it won't blow out uh, and it gives it a little bit of rattle do I like the speed wake man but this is a new bait for 2020 for mega bass too but I'll really like this little over rev crank uh, the new jackhammer yes Brad I've seen it it's the tungsten JDM version there's nothing different other than it's tungsten so um, the guys that's already got those that um, it's probably gonna retail in the US about 21 22 dollars from what I've told so yeah, Mega Bass has some good, unique colors. Uh, them and Six Cents have probably got the best color jobs on the planet right now. Lucky Craft still makes some really good stuff. So, all right, I got two totally new swim baits um, from the Hookup Tackle as well. This is one I've talked about. 
Screw on treble hook weights. I haven't used them. The tungsten head, Brad. You can look them up. Uh, a lot of the Japanese JDM sites already have them. All right. Bateman did six cents change up some color. Sent old provoke shad burst with a solid green back, but new stock came in the same color, but with a detailed scale pattern on the back. More colors to it. Yes, uh, some of the colors are changed up, uh, and that's just simply because sometimes the old factory uh, they try to replicate the colors and they don't get it right, or they change factory for certain baits. And uh, JDM is Japanese domestic market, which means JDM baits are stuff only available in Japan, like the stuff we have here would be the U.S. domestic market, whereas you can't buy six cents baits, most of them, in Japan, so they want to buy our stuff, and they go, oh, this is U.S. stuff, so there's not a, a lot of people think just because it comes from J J Japan, it's totally different than what's in the United States, and for the most part, it's not, it's just certain colors uh, or certain baits are only available in J Japan like uh, a Strike King 66D I buy in Japan is not any different than one in the United States so uh, favorite color mega bass jerk bait is probably uh, Table Rock SP uh, or Ito Tennessee Shad that's a really good one do I need to buy hooks for mag draft it comes with the hook uh, now you can get uh, this version mag draft, which is uh, the freestyle mag draft, and you can put a beast hook in it. Um, but just the ones you that I had show that had the harness system, you don't need to buy any hooks. What's up, Bobby Sullivan? Brad, actually they do. Uh, you would be surprised that I actually get a lot of messages from uh, people overseas, Japanese guys, uh, liking you stuff, especially balsa crankbaits. Man, fishing with G-Man, you cannot catch fish on baits if they uh, if you're afraid to lose them. Uh, I'm going to tell you, uh, I, I get that a lot. Man, I can't throw that. It costs too much, or I'm afraid to lose it. Uh, I buy baits because I want to fish with them. So. Do you run out of baits to the 6 cent set? Do you run out of baits? Do the six cents sacks baits become redundant? I don't understand that question. I don't run out of baits very often, but when I do, I just order what I need. Um, but I like the new, yeah, that matte emerald shad color looks good. So, uh, it, Ichiban Tackle is a really good one um, to check out. You're right. If you're afraid to lose it, you're going to lose it. Me, I just send it. Uh, but anyway, so do all Realis is kind of known as a jerk bait company, spy bait or whatnot. So, but this is a new finesse swim bait. This is the Nomasi Gill. Uh, and you can see it's very small and it comes in a little bitty package. It weighs three eighths of an ounce. So let's check this guy out. And, uh, I was a little late on buying this. This would have been better for me like a month ago. But you see it comes with a little, almost like a wigless wacky rig hook. Well, it's because you rig it wacky style. It is very small. I mean, this is tiny bait. But, how you rig this thing is there's a little hole right here and you stick this wacky rig hook to that hole and that's how you fish it on light line and this little tail back here it makes this thing just real tight wiggle old toe thank you for that five dollar make you holler i appreciate that um dude love them micro jigs uh frankie Actually, I don't get a lot of the same baits over and over again. I, I get a pretty decent variety. They are primarily a hard bait company, uh, but getting a lot of soft plastics and stuff uh, in, in there. So, But this thing is really cool. Uh, the hookup tackle had some great underwater video of that, but I primarily got this to fish around the brim beds on the side of boat docks and stuff like that. 
a very finessey style swim bait. Matter of fact, a subscriber here on the channel, he said he had got some and they were awesome. So I decided to grab one. Um, I like how it comes in its own little package there. I'm going to try to get that back in before I lose it. Again, I'm just trying to get stuff outside the book. Kentucky Lake is, is, is it's getting tough. It's getting deep, uh, different. Um, so I'm trying to get some stuff that I don't think everybody's throwing. Man, that little hook is sharp. It has got me like five times already. And if you break this hook, hopefully you don't break break off, but you can use whatever size, style wacky hook you want to on there. But that's the Nomasi Gill. It's really small. This is a 3 8 ounce version. Uh, but, hang this up too. They have another one called the Deca Nomasi Gill. And it's a lot bigger. Uh, I don't have the, I didn't get the Gill Shad. Um, it's got a little bit different tail. But the, the Deca is more my size. This is a little bit bigger uh, bluegill. And this color is actually called purple gill. As you can imagine, you know I had to snatch that up. It's actually more blue uh, than purple. You can see that. That looks more like a sunfish around in my area. Really love the detail on these, man. That, the, the finish, uh, the paint and all that, it's really, really nice. Yeah, Mark. Mark's okay, Tim. I talked to him today. Um, it, gosh, damn it. I just lost that hook. That's nice. Well, I'll have to find that in the morning. Son of a bitch. But anyway, again, that's a bigger version of that. No, uh, the Namasa Gill. This is the Deca. It's even bigger. I think this would be a great little swim bait for the guys up north. Uh, looks just like a little gill. And when you're bringing that through there, man, that tail's going to wiggle. Again, you rig it wacky style. I don't know if you can see. Well, so there's two places where you can put that hook at. One here, um, one toward the front. One's going to make the nose run a little bit farther up. One's going to make the nose run down. Epic Eric's in here. I wish he was. Let's see. Eric, if you order a Metanium from Japan, someone told me they're cheaper and even more lightweight. They're not any more lightweight. They are cheaper, but... I'm gonna tell you guys this: if you mess, if you order uh, JDM reels from Japan and they mess up, in uh, Shimano US will not warranty them. That is a fact, and you can ask the um, some guys that work for Shimano; they do not warranty JDM reels in the United States. Yeah, dude, Hello Bass is a good dude. What's up, man? I saw uh, your JSJ gill. You got uh, they make some awesome baits, man. So that's what I got from the hookup tackle. Not a giant order, but a good order. Uh, speaking of swim baits, check this old school right here. Uh, Hella Bass knows what I'm talking. This is the original True Tungsten True Life swim bait. Our swim baits have balls. You can actually put these little tungsten beads in the swim bait, and you can make it slow sink or fast sink by adding more weight to it. Uh, a lot of guys like them without any weight like me and use it as a weight bait. Um, they don't make these anymore. I bought this off Byron Velvick's eBay store. And because Byron's cool, he actually sent an autographed uh, pro card. Uh, and just going to let you all in on a little secret. I've already recorded half of a podcast with Byron. We're going to finish it up, finish it up Monday. This dude is letting loose some swim bait knowledge. So uh, we're going to record some more Monday, talk about some more swim baits for beginners and setups, uh, talk about swim baits in tournaments versus just fun fishing, uh, his favorite swim baits, stuff like that. Dude, he, I don't think he knew what he was getting into at first. He's, and he's like, I don't know. I don't know this bait man guy. And once we got to podcast and he was like, dude, we got to keep doing this. He had to go pick up his daughter. He said he'd get with me uh, Monday. We're going to finish it up. I'm really excited for Bateman Raw with Byron Velvet, man. Ordered them Axis Square Bells. Awesome, Rich. Hopefully, use that Bateman code. If not, no big deal. Um, 
Now, I got some more square bills myself. They weren't Axis, but uh, my buddy over at uh, Balsa Concepts, Andrew Mullins, dude, he, he dropped some new uh, Balsa baits. And uh, he, this is an awesome little color here. It's almost like a Tennessee Shad. Uh, this model here is the BCF5L. Oh, man. Check this guy. Got a, got a little small square bill on it. It's going to dive about three to four foot. Big flat side. Really, really like this. Um, kind of like a splatterback Tennessee shad with some gold in it. Kind of an old school looking color, man. I really, really like that. Andrew makes a great bait. You can check him out on Facebook. Uh, just look up Boss of Concepts. I've got several of his baits. But then he sent me a couple other ones. I wouldn't say sent me because I bought them. Guys, it kind of kind of did well on these. Look at here. This one's a little fatter, a little wider. A little round lip on it. And y'all know what color we got here. That's kind of his version of Jaint Juice. It's kind of a purple blue. A little chartreuse. The camera doesn't even, you can't even tell how good the paint job is on this thing right here. It is so nice. But this is a little thicker than uh, many of the flat sides I get. Um, it's got a micarta bill on it. A little short guy. Not going to dive very deep. But it's, uh, it's, it, it's thin and wide. Very cool dude right here. And then, and that model is actually called... The BCF 5T Limited. He calls that one blueback herring, but that's the nastiest looking blueback herring I've seen. Really love his baits. And then, because they were available, I had to get another one. I had to get me another one. Hobie Bass Open is here. I've seen lots of yakkers. This is the Talon X, uh, which almost has that zoom uh, mutt look to it, but it's got a different round bill. Uh, it's thinner than the one I had before. Again, I, I had to get that purple chartreuse. Uh, this thing's, it's got a white side. You really can't tell because of the, the lighting in here, but man. And these hooks he puts on are awesome. I, I, I really like Andrew's stuff. Uh, he makes some great, great baits. And a good dude. So check him out, Boss of Concepts, uh, on Facebook. I'm tired. I'm high as hell. Let me put these up so I don't lose them. I've already got a rack of some of them. I need to get me some more Bass Mafias. You can't stand that eyeball style. You don't like the orange little eyeballs. I kind of like them. Um... Uh, I don't know why, but... And just FYI, guys, I don't think eyeballs matter on a bait at all. If a fish is getting close enough to your crankbait and going, you know what, I'm not biting that because I don't like the eyeballs, something's wrong. So, Brito is making baits, but uh, he's got to get caught up on some stuff. He'll probably be dropping some baits Sunday, so... Yeah, I watched the MLF. Definitely a one-horse race. Um... It was a good day on the water, so I definitely watched. I wa uh, I watched the stuff. So, man, Tom, the only thing uh, I got uh, was that I the I did bid on a California swim baby uh, swim bait there from Byron. Um, I've got a lot of that old two chunks and stuff. Um, so I got some more balsa cranks in. These are even rarer. These are from Jimmy Eder. Uh, this is called an Eater's Custom Crank. And, dude, these are nasty little cranks here, man. These, forgot the exact model on this, but this is very similar to like a baby pig. Look at this guy right here. I love that color. He didn't put the color names in here. I wish he did. But this one right here is kind of like that bull bream. Very similar to a Spro Little John, a little baby pig. 
Really good little bait. You can check him out on Facebook. Uh, Eater's Custom Baits. I know that uh, TK Stanley's very high on him. Uh, a lot of guys. And then, really like this one. This is just kind of a, a chartreuse blue back. Really good quality on these little flat sides, man. Look at that. Really like that. Great little dirty water color. Very finessey. A lot smaller than the balsa concepts. But uh, Jimmy makes a really good bait. First time I've been able to put them in my hands. Very excited about this. I think Epic Eric would be a big fan of these. But man, my balsa collection is just like going insane lately. And it's hot outside, so that's all I've got new for now. Hopefully, I'll get some more new stuff in. It's just the bait world slowed down with everything. So, Awesome, man. Fishing the Gulf of Mexico. Let's do me live. So, any balsa crankbait recommendations for people trying to get into them or give them a shot? Yeah, get you, get you a couple of balsa concepts. If you can get the eaters, it's a smaller one, more of a finesse. Um, but... They all make different models. Um, Black Label Balsa makes really, really good stuff, man. I, I'm going to have some of that in as well. Doug Hayes, this is what I hate about MLF. You never see a five fish tournament over 12 by 12 on the last day. Well... I've seen several five fish tournaments over by 12 on the last day. Timmy Horton was freaking eating pizza at Lake Champlain at 8 o'clock in the morning uh, years ago. Uh, Jason Lambert, it was over on the last day on Kentucky Lake a few years ago. Um, you'll see some close major league fishing events, and we have, but uh, I don't think a lot of the five fish limit tournaments are really that close all the time, but Now, if Major League Fishing went to a five bass format um, catch and release, I think that would be the ultimate deal there. Do Jawjacker in East Tennessee? That's a good Boston one to get. Um, Iris C, uh, you can find those on eBay, um, but that Jawjacker is nasty, man. Rob Cochran makes some great, great baits. I told you you're not allowed in here. See ya. He's in trouble, so he's not supposed to come in here. Uh, I don't know what's going on with Kelly J, uh, but Mark's, Mark Menendez hurt his back in practice, um, and that's all I feel comfortable saying with. Uh, Mark's told me the whole situation, but um, just to let you know, Mark's good. Uh, his back is hurt, but it's like non-life-threatening or anything, so... Yep, Strike King Pros love the Series 5 and Series 4. It's a totally different action and wobble than a 5XD or 6XD. So. Um, live target. I don't throw a lot of live target stuff, Mr. Gambit. Uh, I do like their frog. Um, and believe it or not, their bluegill and gizzard shad swim bait aren't bad. So. Daniel, I saw your partner with Milliken Casey on their new sunglasses. Looks like a good pair of glasses. Man, they are. I like these Waterlands, man. They're pretty nice. They're lightweight. They got several different frames. I got more on the way. And then I kind of feel like the Terminator. Cue the song. I wear my sunglasses at night. You know, if you watch me wearing these sunglasses, it really takes the glare off my face. And I can stare directly into the ring light and, and whatnot. But I'm not going to do that because I'm not that cool to pull that off. Yeah, Junior's a good kid. He just uh, he gets a little mad at the Xbox sometimes, and so I let him know. Yes, sir. My buddy Jay Kumar put that in Bass Blaster, and I had no idea that was coming because I read his, I read every Bass Blaster. I enjoy getting it, and I'm scrolling down, and I'm like, that looks like my picture. And then sure enough, Jay put it in there, and I text him, and he said, hey, man, call me Monday. Let's see if we can work together. So who knows? Uh we were going to do some stuff last year, and it's totally my fault. I kind of dropped the ball. Got really, really busy. So uh, I'm hoping that uh, I can do some work with Bass Blaster. Uh, Bond 21, the rumor was it 
uh, it was a, a six cents crushed 100 X but I don't know exactly what he threw I couldn't tell uh, but it wouldn't surprise me Austin I don't know if they'll have prescription glasses um, but you know what sometimes your local um, eye doctor can get that stuff fixed for you I'm not sure dude I just showed up I just showed off the Namasa Gill man uh, it is on Tackle Warehouse. I'm telling you, you get it quicker if you can get them from the Hookup Tackle right now. I'd like to get my boys over Omni and Fish and Carry some of that swim bait stuff. I'm going to start working with them and helping them out too. I'll get that affiliate link on there. So hopefully when I post cool stuff, you guys can uh, you guys can buy it from Omni. That way when you do, it help me out. Look at this hair. This, I'm my hair is just ridiculous. Holy smokes. I'm gonna to have to keep this thing shaved. Yes, right. Why? Why buy that stri Strike King? You just bump six cents off Matt. Uh, I don't know what he was throwing actually. Uh, I know he was throwing a power worm quite a bit too. But man, Jordan Lee, what a hammer, dude! Absolutely hammer. Um, I gotta let my son in. My daughter walk him out. Sorry about that. You know how it goes up on here. My daughter side lock uh lock him out. So, what do you guys want to talk about tonight? Uh, I'm gonna stream Sunday night as well. So Matt Airy's a really nice guy. Um, He's a guy I've talked to, and uh, he wants to do Bakeman Raw as well. And he does his own Let's Talk Fish with Brian Thrift. Um, so that's pretty cool. I'd like to. I think we're going to do a. You you collaborate with me. I collaborate with you. It'd be really cool. Jordan Lee throwing a hair jig. His words: "Those that know about it know." That's right. Uh, the hair jig does catch him in Florida. Mikey Balls has caught him quite a bit there. So. Let's see here. Somebody just messaged me on Facebook, as always. It's Fat Papa Fifty Five, very good bait, man. Very underrated. A lot of guys don't talk about about it uh, like they do the other spro baits, but I think it's a really good bait. Hundred forty four people watching, make sure you smash the like button, give it a thumbs up. I'm gonna be honest with you guys right now. Thumbs up with my YouTube uh the other day. Um where well, I posted Bateman Raw yesterday and I know a lot of guys don't know who Brent Homan is, so a lot of people are probably like, Man, I don't know that guy, I'm not gonna listen. But usually within a day I can get four to six hundred listens. Dude, it was like terrible. It was like two or three hundred and um, and even when I've been streaming lately, if I'm breaking 150, I'll feel really good. Versus two or three weeks ago, every night I turned this thing on, it was getting five, six, seven hundred, eleven hundred people watching the stream. And it's really weird how YouTube works. Is like one month, anything you upload, man, it gets a ton of views. And then the next thing, you know, it's just like, man, is anything going to take off? Um, but, you know, I, I try not to do this stuff for the views, but I do want people to watch my stuff. I didn't see Mikey, uh... I didn't see that, Michael. Mark Rose, pretty good swimmer, man. You know, he's an Arkansas guy, Cole, so... As you can attest, I think y'all are pretty good about swimming around in, in the lakes and creeks and stuff. That's right, Lunkers Lures. If I use the Guggen word, I'm telling you, I can say... Googan baits, Googan lures, Googans, Googans like goobers. All of a sudden, uh, 
it, it will pick up. And if you tag your videos, uh, say Guggen Squad, <coughs> Darian, uh, you'll get more more views and traction as well. But I mean, Cole and Jay are watching my stream, so I must be doing something right. I think they got like 150,000 subscribers right now, just freaking killing it on YouTube. I looked at Andre, but they were out of the mag draft freestyles. Dude, everybody's been selling the crap out of them freestyles, man. So what YouTube does is if you're not active, uh, let's say I subscribe to a certain channel and I don't watch their videos at all, they'll take your subscription off. Yep. So that's why you'll see a lot of people really fluctuate and think, man, I'm losing subs, I'm losing subs. Um, they are, but they're losing subs from people that, and, and I hate to say this, anytime I do giveaways and stuff like that, there's an amount of people that have subscribed to a channel and won't ever watch a video or nothing. They just want to win something. And it's frustrating because I've had a, peop a couple people win stuff, and I can never, ever get a hold of them. It's like they create an account, hit the subscribe button, and... They never check the email or nothing. So, dude, jackhammer and a fluke is an ass is an nasty trailer. I had a dream a snag proof wobble tron caught me in jail. Man, that's a uh, the little snag proof wobble thing is is uh, a lot of people don't throw that. That's definitely old school. So, yeah, YouTube definitely rewards constant watching, rewards constant uploads, and I'm bad about not being able to upload all the time um, and that's one reason I got a lot of subscribers the last month or so and my views were up I was uploading or streaming at least three to four times a week and I gotta get back to that um, that's why I'm trying to knock some Bateman Raws out so if I can just do a regular video a Bateman Raw and one stream a week I would feel really good about that um, but it's hard to do when you work all the time but Right now, work pays the bills. Uh, wiggle wall, wall is cool. I don't know. I haven't really been fishing, man. Uh, to be honest with you, uh, Kentucky Lake's really tough right now. It's as tough as I've seen it in a long time. Not really trying to discourage anyone that wants to come down here, but these fish are really in between. Uh, they're they're not getting out deep on the main river like a lot of us like it. They're, I don't know. I think though the, the way I like to fish, fishing brush piles is going to be a, a good deal. But we we'll have to put away a lot of swim baits and, and big cranks and stuff like that and get out on that worm game. So I would love to get Joe Lay on Bateman Raw. I think he'd do it. I I know the right people to get a hold of him too. Uh, I think we can get Zach Bird. So um, I'm gonna tell you all this right now. I think Zach Burge got a little bit of, uh, got his damn hole robbed from him, and it kind of went cool. Uh, so Skeet Reese and Zach Burge uh, fished the same pretty much area on separate days. Uh, and then Dustin Connell was in there on the third day after not fishing that area at all during the first first day. Um, now, he could have fished it in practice and, and decided not to or whatnot. But there was a lot of people that were kind of like, man, I think you got whole jump, Burge. And I think it worked out all right. I think ZB finished six. Uh, but I don't know, man. Interesting deal because, you know, in the Major League Fishing Rules, uh, whatever group is not fishing, you're not allowed to watch anything from the first day. Uh, and obviously, it's kind of an honor system. But it's just really weird when a guy wasn't there in practice or wasn't there the first day. And then the third day, um, it was it was there. So, Avina stopped fishing the spot since Skeet was fishing it on his off days. Yeah. So Avina's spot was actually Skeet's spot. I don't know. I don't know. But that's why I wish they would just let all eighty anglers fish on one day and do fish eighty guys the first day. Or first two days, then cut to 40, then cut to 20, and be done with it. I don't like the whole big strong out over a week. So, all 80 guys on day one, the next day, uh, or for two days, then cut to 40, and then your top 20 and be done with it. That's how I feel about it. 
Thanks, Ken Popper. I really appreciate that, man. Uh, yeah, the group A's and group B's and elimination and knockouts, man, you can really change that a whole lot. But you know what? We're watching fishing. I'm not going to complain too much. We There's been too much crap on TV. Yeah, Brad, I did see that. And that's kind of like... Uh, that's that's kind of like a gentleman's agreement, um, you know what I mean? Uh, and that's also the difference between Bobby Lane and a lot of other guys. From everything I ever heard, Bobby Lane is an awesome person. I've met him one time. He's really cool. But it was just kind of in passing. You know, I'm selling him tackle, you know what I mean? But he's really nice. But I've always heard Bobby Lane's a great, great dude, so... It would be hard to cover 80, but they don't cover all 40 in one day either. So, uh, the thing is, GoPros are easy to put on boats. You want an autograph crankbait from David Dudley three months ago, still haven't gotten it. That's crazy. Um, and I, I'm going to defend Dudley. He gets busy. I get busy. I'm not the best at doing, uh, doing my giveaways. I'm not the best at shipping them off quick, but I get them done. Um... So Sunday night, I gotta take care of all our giveaways. I promise you guys, we'll, we'll get that knocked out. So, yeah, Chris is cool. I've met him. He's different than Bobby. I don't mean that in bad, but they're brothers, but they act completely different. What's up, Saint Crest? I haven't seen you in a while, my friend. Well, phone just died. And I don't, I don't want that to say bad about Dustin Connell either. I've met Dustin. He's a great guy. I, I spent a week with him in Florida at ICAST. He's always treated me right. And I don't know. It's just I don't like to see guys arguing like, this guy's fishing my spot, blah, blah, blah. I, the last thing we need in fishing is all kinds of controversy and stuff like that. I would just say, imagine, hey, uh, they found the same water in practice, didn't know it, and that's what happened. So. Bassmaster has drones too, man. God, I, that's the thing. Y'all kill me, D Big Red Bass. Drones are too loud on MLF. It has no language. Dude, FLW Bass uses drones too. Sometimes I really feel like some of you guys just pick out the craziest things to bash MLF. Now, some stuff definitely, you know, I, I agree, but bass don't, uh, the anglers ain't worried about the drones. A lot, that just means they have really good audio. Anyway, that is a six inch jerk bait. That is the Provoke uh, Outdoors Geek. This is my color, Jank Juice. It's a, a chartreuse purple muted purple back. It's a nasty one. Uh, I really like them. They're they're for the money. It's really hard to beat the Jank Juice. Uh, or it's hard to beat the Provoke. Uh, obviously, it's different than a Mega Max. You've never watched FLW or Bass, man. Uh, I love bass and FLW. Um, I watch all fishing. That's right, Ike. You are not part of the click. Yeah, I, you know, it's pretty cool. You can watch Bassmaster on ESPN2 and Major League Fishing on your phone or laptop this week. So You're right. Uh, you're right, Jesse. Um, a lot of the MLF guys were the stars of Bass and FLW, but you know what? Bass is making their own stars now, too. I'm, I'm, I'm seeing some really big names. YouTube guy Kyle Welcher is in the top ten there at Ufala. Uh, awesome for him. A lot of new names. Scott Canterbury, FLW Angler of the Year, or Bassmaster Angler of the Year, his first year, and he's he's looking, uh, he's looking good here at Ufala. Oh, yeah. Also, I love Boy Ducky. Um, Armstrong, I don't, I don't know. The sometimes the baits just don't sell, man. And I think that was a deal. The DD provoke just did not sell. And that that was really fun. Um, I've seen a couple on the waters that will never. Uh, I've seen an on the water incident involving. I won't say the anglers, but one of them one wins on Kentucky Lake quite a bit. And the other is a hammer, and it was basically, hey, uh, if you say one more word, I'm going to whip your ass right here. And I'll just put it this way. The guy that said that, I won't never mess with. 
you know, so. I do not really love Boy Duckett. Uh, to be honest with you, he's always been really nice to me. Um, especially when I fished the Triton Owners Tournament and I wore a bullshad swimbait uh, shirt on the stage and he asked what we caught our bass on and I looked at him and said, a bullshad swimbait. And uh, I thought it was funny. Uh, oh, Welcher missed the top 10. Wow, it's crazy. He was almost in the lead at one point today. Uh, MLF was not Boyd Duckett's idea. It was a Kelly Jordan and Gary Klein idea. Um, now, Boyd is friends with those guys, and, and he was able to really put it together. But the Toyota Texas Bass Classic at Lake Fork, the original one, that was a Kelly Jordan idea, and that was pretty much what started the Major League Fishing thing. So, um, But Gary Klein is pretty much the father of it, and, and him and KJ... And then Boyd was able to, you know, you know, he's got a lot of money, so he knew a lot of people. And, uh, no, I did not hear the story about Avena and Wheeler. Fill me in, Ballin 21. Hopefully it wasn't too slanderous. Dude, I love the Texas te uh, Bass Fest. I was able to uh, do a lot of video work and stuff for the first one. Uh, Mike Otten, our production uh company there in Benton we were kind of in charge of all that video stuff and we knocked it out of the park man yeah man Gary Klein had a great tournament I thought um, you're right Tom it wasn't his idea but he was the original money man and, and you know I hate to say that sometimes to get things done especially in the fishing industry whether it's TV commercialization stuff like that it takes money uh, man, I wish someone could float me forty grand for a year. I promise that I could get some of the most killer content uh, as far as traveling the country, fishing stuff, looking for tackle and whatnot. Um, but I will do it on my own as I can. Yeah, Ike, there's a, what's up, Beast Gamer? Yeah, I want to know that what the co angler said about Avena and Wheeler. Uh, I Jacob's cool with me. I like him. He's the only problem I have against Wheeler is he tries really, really hard to be funny. Like he was a, he was like, oh yeah, uh, Joe Lee called him a big, a big old B, and then he just kept saying big daddy, big, so old biggie, and I'm like, dude, shut up, just shut up. If I and I'm saying this as a friend, just be like, man, that's cool. Caught him a jank and just go on instead of trying to make a rap song out of catching a big fish. I'm like, I know you want to Guggenize everything. Just fish, Wheeler. That's what you're really good at, man. Some guys are not going to be Gerald Swindle. I'm sorry. And I think too many guys are out there trying, um, are trying to be Gerald Swindle when they're, they just need to be them. Thanks, I do like this Dival shirt. Beast Gamer, I appreciate it, man, for the subscription. Wow, that's crazy, man. Yeah, I'd love to go to California uh, and check out their bait shops. Dude, I love you. Take the time to read each comment and respond to your fans. Ken, I try. It's really hard, especially when we get four, five, six, seven hundred people on here. Uh, it gets really crazy. Some nights are like that. Let's see. The co-angler was fishing a pro-am, and a Venian wheeler got into it with his pro. Long story short, you're on our spot. Get out for a water. The pro get into him with them and ended up saying, I'm not dealing. That's crazy, man. Uh, from the last thing I know, uh, all these tournaments are on public water, and there's no such thing as your spot or your water. Now, there is a gentleman's agreement. You know, if you know a certain guy's fishing in a certain place, uh, for the most part, you don't purposely move in on them. But a lot of people, um, you know, find the same stuff in practice. Wow. We're the pros. You need to move on. That happened to me on Kentucky Lake one time. Uh, I won't mention the pro. And this was several years ago. And a buddy of mine was in the boat with me. And he... he He's not a pro, my buddy, he fishes just when I went to go fishing. And uh, pull up on a little ledge, it's a community hole, no big deal. And 
my buddy, he throws out there, big worm catches a four pounder, and then I, I catch like five in a row on a crankbait. All of a sudden, this boat bass boat comes down a ledge, and and this is practiced during a Bassmaster event. Boat comes down the ledge, and they stop like twenty yards from me. I don't care. I just keep fishing. They said, "Hey, what are you doing?" I said, "I'm throwing a crankbait." He said, "Well, I found these fish. I'd appreciate it if you'd lay off of them." I'm like, "Whoa, bud!" I said, uh, "Well, I'm sorry. I'm just out here fun fishing." And he kind of cussed me and basically said. Uh, because I'm a Bassmaster Pro and I found these fish, you're not allowed to fish this ledge. And I, and I just said, look, bud, we're just a couple of teenagers. I think I was like 19 or 20. I said, I don't get to fish for a living like you. This is my home lake. And if I find some fish that are biting, I'm going to catch them. And he kind of did one of those donuts around my boat and left. And I'm not going to tell you his name. Um, he doesn't fish bass anymore. And, you know, my buddy's like, what a turd. So... We left, went to another spot, and started catching him. And here he comes back, and instead of cussing me out, he went beep beep on a waypoint button and drove off. And uh, now that was some bogus stuff. I'm just going to tell you, Ken, he was so good. I don't think he ever made a top ten that year. So, It's okay to be good at fishing and be a dork, trust me, because I'm not good at fishing and I'm a dork, and some y'all like to watch me, so. All right. I don't know anything. Of, oh, yeah, Shimano Black Moon Backpack. It uh, It's a really good one, man. It's one, a, one of the better backpacks out there. holds a lot of baits. It's really comfortable, too, when you're wearing it. You know, if you're bank fishing and you're moving from spot to spot and you're wearing it, it's pretty comfortable. It won't wear you out. You still can't skip a jig, though, Illuminathan. Uh, let's see. What's, where's the best place to watch this tournament? Is MLF on ESPN? No, they're on MajorLeagueFishing.com. Uh, I watch uh, I watch them on my laptop or my cell phone. It is heavy, but it's a comfortable heavy. Uh, some of those backpacks, and not just fishing backpacks, but hunting backpacks, you can put a lot of shit in there, but... It's just, they're not comfortable to wear. Uh, Badlands was my favorite hunting backpack. Uh, when I was um, filming hunting shows, I loved that. I would love to have Badlands make a fishing backpack. I think they could knock it out of the park. <coughs> I think Hella Bass, and, and you can uh, agree or... Uh, disagree with me this is a good question for you i think for mlf to th take the next level um they're going to have to get um coverage on a network instead of just the internet because unfortunately bass fishing there's a lot of people in that 45 to 70 year old range that love watching bass fishing and they're going to watch the reruns of bass on tv and not watch bass live so i think they're going to have to get some kind of deal with somebody whether it's FS1 or, or, or something like that, or CBS Sports, I don't know. What's up, Victor? Yes, very huge uh, time yet. Epic Eric helps the numbers. Man, uh, he does a little bit, but Rick, I'm going to tell you, the most viewers I ever had, Eric, Eric, Epic Eric wasn't on here. Uh, I think Rich Hellabass remembers we had, what, almost 1,200 viewers one night. It was me by myself. Uh, uh, and me and Eric streamed a few weeks ago, and we barely got over 300 viewers. So I think it's a lot of different factors, man. I think number one is being consistent during the week. You know, uh, that two-week span where I was streaming about every other night and uploading something, I think it was just the algorithm was liking what we were doing. Um, but yeah, obviously Eric's going to help. I love it when he jumps on here, but, um, I know two nights in a row, man, I, I was, at, I got 700 and then a few nights later, uh, the night at, I think it was the stream after me and Eric hit a thousand, I'd put up 1100 by myself. And then the next night it was like 750. So no problem. Beast gamer. Uh, thanks for subscribing to the channel. Glad you joined in here. But I guess a lot of people watch uh, the Bateman show after I stream because the last one 
I just did uh, last Friday night. Uh, you know, I only, I only had like 200 guys on here. I got up actually, I got up to about 500 at one time, and then after I went to bed, it had like 3,000 views the next day. So, but again, I'm I'm just I'm just on here BSing with you guys. I'm not trying to get 10,000 views. I guess I could beg for donations like Lunkers TV. If you don't give me ten dollars, then I'm not going to stream anymore. I think a few guys will go back to bass in a year and a half. Uh, I think you're going to see uh, FLW competition get a little bit stronger uh, because after that third year, they're going to cut some guys from major league fishing. Um, a lot of people forget that there's going to be guys go back to bass, but they can't. Here's the deal: you're not going to go back to bass to the league series. You're going to have to qualify through through the opens um, the rumor has they're not going to let any more of uh, the bass champions uh, the deal with the bass legend pass that uh, Gerald and Paul Nick got that's not going to happen anymore everyone's going to have to qualify through the opens I think Skeet Reese would be uh, back on major league fishing he's a good fisher fisherman uh, I think Christy will probably go back to bass if he qualifies through the opens and a lot of guys are going to fish the FLW tier Dang, Guthrie's driving 556 miles. That's awesome that you're uh, um, driving over here. Christy can afford it, man. He's a hammer. He'll luck up and win him uh, open. Yeah, so that's an interesting point. Lunkers TV got him a new bass boat and got him a Phoenix. And so did uh, Lake Four Guy. What's crazy is about two years ago, they did a little podcast around a fire, and basically Lunkers and the rest of them bashed Phoenix boats and basically called them um, turds and all this because they wouldn't give them free boats. Um, and I'll be honest, man, if Phoenix pulled a Drew Brees and went back and gave them some big deal because of that, shame on them, man. Those guys uh, really bash the crap out of phoenix boats i mean that would be like boy duckett giving me a deal with bd Bates. um i did hear the lake of egypt power plant is closed and that is crazy so uh a lot of guys fish lake egypt in illinois because it's power plant bait uh power plant lake in the winter and it keeps it warm so it's going to definitely be a change for the fish as well dustin Legend status was two per year. That's right, but I have heard they may not happen no more. It's just a rumor. Because Boy Duckett won a classic. Technically, he could use a Bass Legend exemption and go to Bass. And a lot of people at Bass know that, and they don't want that to happen. And they think Boyd would actually try to do it if he doesn't qualify for the top 60 or 70 on the Major League Fishing Tour. Scott Martin and B. Light, if they don't qualify for the Opens, they don't go to the Elite Series. That's where it puts them. They can probably try to go back to the FLW Tour. I think Scott, I think both both of those guys have a good chance of qualifying. Yep, Ben Milliken is the original Phoenix, yeah. That is funny. They always Those guys bash on Ben, they had to go get a boat just like his. Man, I just ain't gonna. I'm, I, dude. I feel good if I buy seventy bucks for the stuff from Hookup Tackle. I mean, I don't have boxes full of Guggen baits and all that BS. Um, hell, my truck is freaking worth about twenty five hundred dollars. Do you think some MLF guys will go to that new league? No, I don't think so. I'll be honest with you. Uh, I think the I think the new league has a chance, but I want to see it get off the ground first. They don't even have a schedule or know where they're fishing, um, and they and supposedly here this is all going to happen in 2021. Um, I don't know. TK Customs was OG Phoenix. Yeah, uh, he is man. Trey's a good dude. He just he's like me. He don't have a lot of YouTube followers where people are going to remember that. So. Ben seems like the best jock asshole buddy you will ever have. 
man, ben, Ben's just like me. You're either going to love him or you're going to hate him. He's really black or, or really white, and uh, some people don't like that, but he's always treated me good. I've known him. We've known each other before either of us put a video up on YouTube. So at one time, I had more subs than Ben Milliken for about six months. It was pretty awesome. No problem, Leo. What color lure would you throw in an algae color water like Clear Lake in July? Ooh. I don't know. Chartreuse and blue, man. Uh, anything with some chartreuse in it. No problem, Clayton. Glad you joined in me. A lot of guys join in on the break time. I appreciate that. All right. Am I affiliated with the Hookup Tackle? No, I'm not. Um... I am not affiliated with the Hookup Tackle. Um, great people, though, and I recommend buying stuff from them. I wish I, I wish I had a discount code myself. Got, they're sponsored by Mercury. Uh, I have a vague feeling that's they're not. They got the boats to their dealership. Uh, Mercury has no control over what dealers, uh, what boats people buy. It's like somebody said. Um, well, uh, now that Evan Rude, I, I got to think of how they put that. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> they said, you can't buy a Ranger with the Yamaha on it because Yamaha owns Skeeter. Now, that's true. Yamaha owns Skeeter, but you can absolutely get a Ranger with a Yamaha on it and a Phoenix with a Yamaha. That's what they said. You can't buy a Phoenix uh, with a Yamaha. Skeeter won't allow it. Uh, yeah. they're going. If you're a customer and you want to order a Phoenix with a Yamaha, that dealer will get you a Yamaha on there. Well, a lot of people can get sponsored by Mercury. They'll send you a shirt and a pair of shorts. I mean, hell, I'm surprised they haven't sent me one either. Remember, there's a big difference between being sponsored and being paid. It's just, there's a lot of people out there that promote JB's fish sauce, and all they're getting is two packs of JB's fish sauce a month. Now, are they getting some money from Mercury? Probably. They're a lot huge, bigger than me. So, yeah, no good company is going to say, "Yeah, I'm not going to sell you my motor to put on that boat." Uh, yeah, uh, Lynn, I would kind of say that's a very good sign. Very good sign. Going to try the stubborn grub. I'd like to know what it is. Send it to me and I'll try it. Yeah, dude, the wife got on the beard uh, right before I did the stream. I'm going to tighten it up a little bit more. Um, going to try to grow out the heaters only here. Shout out to Justin Rule. Maybe I'll see if, see if I can get a long beard challenge with him. Bass Boat Central. Bass Boat Central freaks out about anything. A bunch of freaking 50, 60-year-old men that got javelin boats and their avatars. Uh, there's some good people on there, but for the most part, it's just a bunch of old farts. Hopefully they see this. Some of those guys are really good. Some of those guys bash the crap out of me on there. Uh-oh. No, Chris. I'm coming to get your six cents box, and I'm going to save it for you. I'm going to go fishing with your baits first, but I'll make sure you get them back. Sponsorship is a 20% discount on a 40% markup item. Yep. Jason Christie, I don't think uh, that Jason Christie has to worry about any sponsors. Yeah, we're going to get Justin Royal on here, man. He's a cool dude. Uh, we're going to try to get that worked out soon. Dude, no problem, Carl. I love the shirt, too. It's a little it's a little hot. I don't normally wear long sleeves, but I figured I'd rep the D. Ooh, that sounded bad, repping the D. I figured I would just... Rep Daiwa. I don't want anyone to think I'm... Yeah, you know what I'm saying. It was Tom, I'm pretty sure they had... At one time, they had two turbines or two generators going, and the lake would stay even warmer uh, during the winter. And they, or two reactors. I forgot how it is. Now it's just down to one. So, Ah, oh, yeah. Pete showed me that 11-inch stubborn grub. Pete's a good dude, man. I really like him. What's my favorite deep diving crankbait in the 20-foot range? Uh, 6XD, 
a Cloud 15, and a Rapala DT-16. Uh, but it really, the DT-16 doesn't get down to uh, 20 foot. It gets down to about 16, 17 foot. Uh, but, man, it's just hard to beat a DT-16, man. Or a 6XD. Dude, Zillion HD, that's a sweet freaking rip. What brand hook does Sixth Sense use? I need some good short chain EWD trebles and wet red. I'm not sure. I think it's a must add. Uh, Bateman Mobile Tackle Security Service sounds like a quality business idea. There we go. So I'm new. Do you stream every Friday? Well, I actually stream about every Saturday night, uh, Beast Gamer, but. Got my anniversary with my wife tomorrow night, and then she would kill me if I stream over taking her out on the town and uh, what, whatever else she wants to do. Probably basically spend my money, uh, but I'll, I'll probably stream Sunday night. But Saturdays are usually not I stream the most, but I've done Friday night uh, the last two weekends. And if I don't work on Thursday nights, I like to stream on Thursday night. So, did anyone else catch that orb? Ghost Adventures coming up to the bait house. I have not seen the Smash Tech Magnum Crawler. I'll have to look that up. I just saw it. I just saw the orb. I'm freaked out, man. I am, It just went like... Whew. Oh, I know what it is. <clears throat> I'm sitting now. There's these little bitty bugs. Uh, I've got my door open here to my uh, bait room, and and they kind of come in. They fly through the light, and yeah, that's what that was. But it did look like an orb. That was crazy. Someone screenshot that, sent it to the dude at Ghost Hunters. That would get my channel to blow up. I would I would take that guy fishing. You know. Maybe I need to uh, stage a boat wreck. I don't know. Seems like that's what people are doing now. Or, uh... I actually have a video that has about 800,000 views. I want to find this YouTube video I have doing some dumb stuff in the Skeeter boat. I'm going to link it down here. And I might re-upload it on my channel. And I'm going to put the link here in the chat. This is my old YouTube channel. 479,000 views. If y'all want to see me doing a being a dumbass in a bass boat, click that link. Yeah, there's some people on the Lake Gunnersville page saying that uh, the 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 boat the Darien Craig boat wreck was staged. I would I don't know. Uh, I would think Darien would not do anything like that. I think it was just a, a weird time and deal, uh, and that stuff can't happen. Dude, I love the show. It's a great motor. Uh, but I've been in that Mercury 4 uh, stroke as well. Uh, it's nasty. I mean, it's got some power. What's Luke, du what's, what's Luke Duncan think of, of, of that? I, I haven't listened to much of Luke's stuff lately. No offense to Luke, I just haven't had time. I've stabbed myself in the arm multiple times with a treble, but that's mostly trying to get them on out of the package to show you guys. But, hey, if that's the stuff you're into, that's cool. And I'm not trying to bash Darren, but let, let's just be honest, man. Uh, totally different. Uh, how do I feel about George Floyd? All right, I'm going to say this once. I'm not going to say this again. 
Uh, I respect all the police and our armed officers, but there are dumbasses in all levels of life, and that police officer was a dumbass. Do I think he was a racist? I don't know. I don't know the guy, uh, but it was shitty, and here's the deal. Uh, police brutality, all that kind of stuff, it is what it is. Uh, there are definitely people in law enforcement that have zero um, clue uh, and shouldn't be wearing a badge. And that's all I'm going to say about it. Uh, I love my African-American, black, whatever you want to call them. I just call them brothers because I like people not based on their skin color, but based on how they treat me as a person. Orange, green, black, blue, whatever color. We're all friends. We're all fishermen. And... Uh, I don't care what religion are you are or who you want to kiss and stuff like that. Treat others how you want to be treated. Everything else will be fine. So, uh, to, Carl Acorn gave me two dollar ninety nine. Make you hollers, woo woo. Yeah, man, appreciate it, Carl. Um, yes, I was the one driving the skeeter in that lake, man. I actually had a life vest on. You couldn't tell, but I, I had the suspenders thing on that uh that was my boat matter of fact i had another video uh on that same channel that's about that's got eighty thousand views about two minutes to me i actually got that thing up to like 77 miles an hour how did i manage not to flip that skeeter uh you know what's funny about that is i'd actually cut it even harder two or three times before that um i i actually rode in a skeeter with a pro and he sh showed me how to do that stuff. So, Dustin, appreciate you, man. I know you got a tough job, and it got my respect. I'm going to tell you, you don't want to work with the gum kids I used to work with, man. When I was working in Juvie, yes, I worked at Juvie Detention Center one time. Um, them kids can spit on you. They can hit you, do whatever. You can't do nothing back. Uh, I actually enjoyed it. I, I I hope that I made a good impression on some kids. So. That's right. That's why I represent the D. Man, uh, Nick Cream, he's a he has made some cool stuff. Man, that is for sure. Uh, really got the plastic worm out there to the masses. Best oversized soft swim bait to power fish, in my opinion. Ooh. So we want to talk about over six, eight inches. Uh, I want to go with eight inch trash fish is really good. Um, that's one of my favorites. The eight inch uh, mag draft is obviously really, really good. But you're fishing deep. Uh, it's going to be a seven inch bass tricks or that big mag draft. Uh, Dream Smasher swim baits. Uh, I got a buddy that's got a that's got some hella bass knows all about them they're an awesome uh swim bait a great ledge fishing swim bait as well i love how it's kind of nose weighted um one thing they're good about you can fish it uh slow and rip it hard up and let it fall back to the bottom been a lot of fish caught on it that way if i was going to buy a brand new boat tomorrow money's not an option i'd probably buy a vexus v21 or i'd probably buy a now that the Guggens have Skeeters, I won't buy one. Or, or Guggens have Phoenixes, I don't want one. So I would probably have to go with a new FXR Skeeter or a VX21 Vexus. Maybe Camus. I just haven't rolled into Camus. But going with that Vexus, man, the thing about it, it's not going to be the fastest boat, but by gosh, my back ain't going to hurt. And I ain't going to worry about my fish dying. Dude, I guarantee you some big plum worms getting smashed this week. It may not be on this lake, but it's going to happen somewhere. Plum is such a good color, man. It, but you know what's crazy is I've tried making plum-colored jigs. And I can't get them to bite it. But you put a plum-colored worm, they're going to smash it. Favorite big worm? Uh, this one right here, man. This is my favorite big worm. Yeah, he did. I talked about that earlier, Victor. It's a really good video, by the way. This is my favorite big worm ever made right here. This is a Lucky Strike uh, original ringer, uh, Ken. I will literally probably have five to six hundred of this the same worm 
hanging on my wall. Um, and they, they used to be $4.99 for a pack of 20. Now they're $4.99 for like a pack of 10. Well, th Lynn Moss, this is the Brit cone worm right here. My wife actually cuts Brit's hair. He's a really good guy. He's totally done with fishing. He crappie fish, but that dude... Uh, he used to buy those all the time when I was selling tackle, and finally I just was like, "Dude, what's the deal with that?" And he he gave he said he gave me three or four to go throw this in a brush pile. And tr truth. True North. Uh, yeah, let let them know where to get them big worms at uh, Old Toad. Which soft plastic brand is the best color, in your opinion? Rubble Worm? Uh, man, I'll be honest with you. Missile Baits has got some really good soft plastic colors. Uh, six cents soft plastic colors are the shiznit. Um, I, I hate to say it, man. Zoom dominates, man. Rubble Worm, really good for finesse stuff. But as far as their bigger stuff, um, you don't have to have a lot of crazy colors, um, in, in plastics you really just need a good plum a good green pumpkin and stuff like that does anyone make a good line through swim bait with a top treble hook yes burrito baits does uh so burrito baits makes uh swim baits uh line through with the top treble i'll, I'll show you here So this is a this is a burrito bait. This is a burrito gizzard. Uh, they call I believe this is a it's not the taco, but it's uh, the burrito supreme. And if you look here on the nose, your line goes in the nose, and it comes out here in the back. This thing right here is nasty. And by gosh, that looks like I just haven't had a chance to throw that this year. Uh, I'm going to. I'm going to try to get this thing in the water soon. Dude, Superbug's an amazing color. Yep, Defiant has a, a treble up top. And I think uh, 316 also makes a line through uh, top hook. 316 uh, Rising Sun top hook. That is an amazing top hook line through. Vape Man will not be busting out any Mondo worms, that's for sure. I'm surprised I haven't got a sack of dog poop on my porch from the Guggen Squad. Um, I, I wouldn't mind having John B. or Perrick on a podcast, to be honest with you. I think John B.'s pretty cool, and Perrick. As long as we're not going to have an infomercial about baits. Well, all I got to say is they make a lot more money than me. I'm not hating on them. I just like to make fun of them. And that's okay. People hated on Dale Earnhardt Jr. He was like the most popular driver other than Bill Elliott ever in NASCAR. So. We once got a box of Norwegian horse poop sent to our mailbox from a sub. Wow, that's hilarious. There is, That is hilarious. Wow. That's maybe that's why I haven't got me a PO box address. Oh my, I'm afraid I would get some really crazy stuff. But I do want well, guys know a lot of people has emailed me before, and I always try to respond to your emails too. By the way, um, that's funny. Have John B on donate a dollar overtime every time he says Bandito Bunk. Bandito Bug. That's funny. More like poo box, not a PO. That's funny. Wow, I can't believe that. I, I'm I'm laughing pretty hard. So I know it's cold. You're growing out the hair back there. You're gonna go. You're gonna you're gonna go uh, party in the back. Business up front. Uh, no, I have not, uh, Nathan. I haven't used my new SVs yet. 
um, I need to do some fishing bad. If it wasn't my anniversary this weekend, I was going to fish for like two or three days straight. I was actually going to go to Pickwick with Jake Lawrence, and I still might next weekend. I really want to go with Jake because he's on some fish, and we can make a really good electronics video and some other stuff. Um, if you send me Guggen baits to my P.O. Box address, I will definitely um, send you poop to your to the return address. It's my quarantine haircut. Hey. Come up here, we can go to Lake X Cole, and I can get you a haircut from a professional. Carl Acorn, $50, make you holler. You're the man, Carl. You're the man. I appreciate that tonight, man. Uh, you don't ever, you, you already donated four bucks, man. That's all you had to send. I, I really appreciate that. Um, um, And you tune in like every week, Carl. I want you to know I appreciate you jumping on the live streams. I try to answer everybody's question. Don't ever feel that you got to make a donation to feel special on this channel. I enjoy all my subs and guys that join in the chat every week. Except for Hella Bass. I really like him. He's cool. He, he's an extra special moderator. So, Man, I'd love to take my wife on a guided Kentucky Lake trip. The problem is she's good. Maybe better than me, Hella Bass, and I'm afraid she would be guiding me at the end of the trip. So. Old Toad says the original ringers on True North Fishing, four ninety nine a pack. So, dude, I am going to get a Lake X giveaway. Here's the deal: I, my goal this year was to get fifteen thousand subscribers by December. That may happen at the end of June. If we could get twenty thousand subs by Christmas. I'll give away a trip to Lake X. I'll be your guide. Uh, I'll find a place to put you up for a weekend. If you can get your way to Western Kentucky, I'll get you a guided trip. We'll go out on Lake X and film it. <laughs> Let's rig it. I'm just saying, if you're a subscriber, you've got a chance. But if you don't subscribe to the channel, you won't. Dude, if you had nothing but Guggen baits on your boards behind you and posted a photo, would that be considered clickbait? That would be considered, I'm quitting YouTube. Any tips on making a drop shot more wigless? Uh, yes, get the Robo Worm rebar hooks and wigless uh, rig it, Texas, expose it. Got my first babe, can't get it to run at all. Rolls bad, harness version. So sensitive to retrieve speed, it's unfishable. Any advice? Throw it on a 5 to 1 or 6 to 3 reel. Um, I just, I, th I really think you're fishing it too fast. And what happens, and, and don't get me wrong, get in some real clear water. A lot of times, if you're not in super clear water, you start to see that bait get out of your visibility and you speed it up because you want to look at it. Trust me, if you reel that boat bait really slow like this, it's going to run straight. Um, And that's the thing, it's very sensitive. I tell guys all the time, if you throw the babe and you start reeling it like this, it's gonna it's gonna roll. You've got to fish it really slow. It's meant to fish slow. I've had a lot of guys send me pictures though, some giants they've caught on the babe. Especially in the last month or so. Let's see. Now what you can do. Uh, LGC, you can add some weight to that uh, uh, the babe. If you'll get you some nail weights and you'll try to put them on the bottom and try to even that kill out, you can get that thing to quit rolling if you're, if you're having that much trouble with it. I'll, I'll probably need to do a video on how to do that. Josh, we're just talking, man. We, we talked about some balsa banks. I got some mega bass cranks and stuff. We're just in here talking, uh, but I got some pretty cool stuff, you know, from from Jimmy Edder and some balsa baits as well. But we're just down here shooting the crap and, and making fun of the Googans. Um, yep, owner cover shot or the ro uh, Robo Worm. Um, 
hook is uh, really good for Texas rigging a drop shot. And you can get hella bass, you're right. You can get a VMC Nico with the floral barb. That's the one I use. I love that hook. That's a nasty hook. I do fish swim jigs. Uh, I won't say I'm religious with it. Uh, Hella Bass is the better swim jig fisherman. I guarantee you that. Uh, I personally like a swim bait or I like a Rage Menace grub. That's my favorite uh, trailer. Uh, right now, that Divine swim bait, and I actually like the 4.4 uh, because it's a little bit fatter on that six cents uh, swim jig. It's nasty. Now, if I went to more of a finesse swim jig, like the Dirty Jigs finesse or even... Um, the one Hellabass talks about the Bravarni, I'd go to a little bit smaller trailer. Yeah, dude, Mike's Tackle World is stacks, and they messaged me and told me that that video uh, was awesome, and their phone has been ringing nonstop. That that videos went crazy. Um, it's got about thirty-one thousand views in it, so um, that's really helped out on the subscribers and whatnot. But I want to do more videos like that. I got another video. I'm going to try to get it uploaded. Uh, uh, maybe work on it. Maybe I can work on get this video done tomorrow and I'll upload it tomorrow night since I won't be able to stream. Uh, but I actually scored. I scored some pretty rare jackal crankbaits um, and found some stuff from a subs for a subscriber. Um, I did see that KGB dropped that crappie. But, uh, what time did I get on here? We've been on here almost two hours. Should I keep going or not? Nah? Because I'm out of Mountain Dew. The Bait Hub, I, Bait Hub, uh, uh, it's not going. Um, I need to get my website back going for sure. Not even playing on that. I feel like everybody's doing a website or something like that. We've got 255 guys on here. Crazy. Uh, I have been to Bacon's Tackle. Uh, it's an amazing place, dude. Uh, I was there. the year, Last year, they had the Classic in Shreveport. I was there. Went in there. Uh, I'm kicking myself, dude. I went in that place. They had so much good old school stuff. I was actually there shooting video with Zell Rowland and a couple of the Excalibur guys. And, uh, dude, I wish I'd been in there and, and bought half the stuff that was on the shelf. I've heard Need More Tackle's really good. Um, there's some places in South and North Carolina I really know I need to hood up. I'd really like to go out to the West Coast, California. There's a lot of history with those old shops. Uh, Last Chance Tackle out in Arizona would be a good one as well. And love to go to the Hookup Tackle. Picked up a few Axis Cranks. Best place for them. Uh, three to four foot of water. Uh, places you would throw a square bill crankbait. It's really good for the Axis. I think it's even better for dirty water. It's got a lot of roll to it. Um, the most roll you'll see on a square bill. I uh, don't want guys to think it's going to chatter like a chatter bait because it does not do that. What are your go-to summertime baits besides a big worm? Uh, used to be a big crankbait, but uh, fish are, um, if I can get away with fishing a crankbait, it's my favorite way to fish in summer. Uh, I like throwing a swim bait, football jig, and I like a hair jig as well. Uh, the hair jig bite, when you get on it, is one of the most funnest bites you'll ever uh, get. I've heard that Last Chance is, uh, their website seems like it's never stocked up. I don't know what's going on with that. They're really good guys. I wonder if they're so focused on the marine part. I, I don't know what's going on. I do throw a Nico rig out deep. Absolutely. Love the Nico out deep. I probably fish it deep more than I do fishing it shallow. Uh, we, you can actually stuff a big cylinder drop shot weight into these big giant worms. Uh, and have like a Magnum Nico rig. Yep, that's one I want to go to East Ca County Bait and Tackle. That's an old old sc school shop. What's up, Kyle? Well, I'm going to wrap her up here in just a little bit. We're just talking, man. We're talking summer fishing. We're talking whenever fishing. Uh, we talked about some flat side cranks. So uh, 
for you guys that just joined, this is a, a new balsa crank I just got. Bait hub or bust, we're going to have to get her done. The name baithub.com is actually taken. But this is a, a Jimmy Edders little flat side crank. Uh, I don't know exactly the model. I wish they'd put it in the packaging. But very similar to like a little baby pig. Really like that. I wish y'all could see the flake on this thing. It, it's a chartreuse and blue, but it's got some like Norman flake in it. Uh, and then I got some more than Balsa Concepts, uh, Sean. 273. Wow. I've got so many of these boss baits. Man, this one right here. This is one of my favorites. He did a really good job. Y'all need to follow me on Instagram. I'll probably post a photo of these tomorrow. That purple just... That's nasty how it stands out. This light on my webcam is terrible, but... Whew, we love that little stumpy boss right there. This one's heavy enough. You're definitely going to cast it on some baitcaster gear, so... One old school bait you would like to see come back into production. Uh, I'm going to be honest with you, man. Uh, depends on how old school you're talking about. Uh, I wish they would just bring back the Build Ants colors in the Flat A. Uh, flat A is old school to me. Uh, I would love to see them bring them old colors back. For sure. Um... I'll be, uh, the man's, uh, the Hank Parker spinnerbait's a really, really good one. What's up, Sean La? I have tried the PH custom baits. They're good baits, man. I don't have a Wobbletron, uh, but the Wiggle O was pretty good. Dude, I'm really excited to, to throw this Mega Bass Burning Shad. I probably should have got some more of these things. I like that noise. Vixen is back. Uh, the original Vixen is back. It's called the Tackle Kick Knocker. I keep telling guys that, and they don't believe me. Just look at the colors. Man, I love this little bait. That's going to get some big blow-ups. I think I can catch a small eye on that. Dude, the Hildebrandt, uh, the blade. Just buy a Tackle Kick Knocker, and you'll be fine if you want an OG Vixen. Or buy the normal Vixen. I swear there's no difference. Like, people will argue and say there's a difference. When the guy that made them, Josh Heron and Andre Moore, tell you there's no difference other than the line tie in the first run. Sorry, uh, my my dog was one in the house really bad. Yeah, so I was trying to get the uh, the ORC wake bait. It's bigger. This is the burning shed, which is an even smaller version, and it's this cotton wakizaki color. It's a it's smaller than the KV 2.5 wake bait too. So I wanted something that was just a really kind of a finesse wake bait that I could like parallel some rip wrap. Or maybe throw over some pig gravel stuff. Try to catch some brown fish. I just, yeah, JCB. I just told you the kick knocker was the original Vixen. Uh, Pangrak is a good dude, but anybody that's watched this channel for the past year, I've let them know the Tekel is, is the original Vixen. Um, and Pangrak's a good dude. He knows his stuff. Let's talk buzz baits. Man, I always talk some buzz baits, don't I? Uh, my favorite is just the old Boogerman style. I, throw quite, I like the Accent Game Changer, um, if I'm going to put a frog on one. And I, I like a War Eagle buzz bait, believe it or not. I've done really well on the War Eagle buzz bait. But I feel like we talk buzz baits every time I'm on here, so I'm going to slide away from them. So I've went from like not having any wake baits to having like six cents, uh, mega bass now, uh, a Berkeley wake bait, um, Strike King wake baits. I want a whole box dedicated to wake baits. There's just an area 
I don't have a lot of stuff to, and I want to figure out what's best, you know, for like throwing a finesse wake uh, or throwing a big wake bait, you know, like some of the stuff that uh, guys throw in the swim bait land, like the, the bull wake. Uh, I need to have one of those. Mike's a good friend of mine, and I almost bought some bull glides the other day, but uh, no offense to Mike, I just didn't feel like dropping 100 bones. Uh, rats, that's a place I really want. Uh, the Bomber Long A is an OG weight bait, and it's nasty. What are the orange swim baits in the Spark Shad? Y'all always want to know what these are. Every week somebody asks, this is a Big Bite Suicide Shad in Raven Red. Um, great for a rig in dirty water. Uh, you can put them on the back of a chatter bait or something like that. Personally, um, I've only caught them on an a rig on this thing. And they even make they make this color too, which is pretty sweet, which is a uh, purple dawn. Just some different stuff for dirty water. Um, I would like to see the Jackal Bling 55 brought back. That's one of my favorite um, JDM flat sides. It's basically like their version of a uh, WEC Mutt. Yep, the Mikey's a good weight bait for sure. The Fat A is being discontinued. Wow. Wade hogs, those are good, man. I, I I need to get some toxic baits, man. I really like their stuff. I know they suck really bad, but I'd really like to get a few. What do you think about Wheeler posting a zero on the scales today, man? It's going to happen. Dude, KVD zeroed. Uh, I'm not going to hate a guy for uh, posting a zero unless he's Jason Christie and does it every tournament. Dude, look at that bug going crazy. I'll tell you something, I found it found it while I go. I found it in my truck. I found a bunch of these. These are really cool. These are the Reigns tungsten football heads. So instead of using a bullet weight, if you put that uh, tungsten football in front, you kind of make your own wobble head. You can peg it about six inches in front of, or about two inches in front of your hook, and you've got your own tungsten wobble head. But make sure you put a bead behind it. Yeah, three pound minimum is tough, but here's the deal. Everyone complains about Major League Fishing, all they catch is dink. So then they say, all right, we're going to make a two, three pound minimum. Now people complain they're not catching fish. I mean, what do you want? Uh, I don't know. I just feel as people that don't like Major League Fishing will find a reason not to like Major League Fishing. Uh, that said... Um, I personally would like to see uh, a five fish minute, five, a five fish limit. You can still catch release all you want, but I would like to um, see a five fish limit, and you can call as the day goes on. But then again, I like the fact that you know a guy like Jordan Lee goes offshore and can go. Um, a guy like Jordan Lee goes offshore and finds a mother load. He was able to let pretty much hold it up for two or three days. And what I noticed too is the guys that were catching the best five to ten bass were traditionally guys in the top ten uh, during this event. What was the weight you used for a Carolina rig uh, that I'm almost out of? I basically just use. Uh, uh, a, t a tungsten. I used to use the old Lake Fork uh, cylinder tungstens. Those were my favorite for a Carolina rig. Uh, now I just use the Strike King ones. Thoughts on a 10 to 1 would be an awesome buzz bait, wake bait, uh, topwater reel. Uh, it's not going to have any torque at all on it though. Being at 10 to 1, uh, it's so fast that it wouldn't make a good flipping uh, or pitching reel. The only problem with high gear ratios is they don't have torque uh, like a 5, a 6, or 7 to 1. So if you get a car with 800 horsepower, if it's got a good rear end in it, the right ratio, rear, 800 horsepower, but you have a real high gear in it, it's going to spin. 
<coughs> spin the wheels. You put a low gear in it, it'll take off and it have torque. Do I root for anyone at MLF? Yeah, I do. I root for my buddy Kelly Jordan. Uh, he's had it pretty rough. Um, Zach Burge, I root for him uh, quite a bit. Uh, I like Cody Meyer. I like rooting for Cody as well. Um, there's a lot of guys. It, it, I like Jordan Lee, man. I find myself rooting for uh, Joe Lee quite a bit. And Justin Atkins, man. Uh, Justin's a great dude. So, Bateman, ever try the Zim Ultravise Speed Worm? Yes, I do. I'll throw it in June Bug or um, Watermelon Red's always been one of my favorites in that worm. So, Guys, I'm fixing to have to get off here. I've got to get prepped for tomorrow night. And uh, I'm going to be back streaming Sunday night, guys. Um, we'll pick up pick a topic I gotta get the giveaway stuff uh, going on or some of y'all are gonna beat my inbox down um, and then we'll, we'll we'll try to get another giveaway going or something but Sunday night we'll figure out a topic I really want to do that jig show I talked about um, so we'll get on that but uh, make sure you guys check out Waterland uh, company for sunglasses uh, use my code Bateman 10 if you decide to make a purchase uh, use my code Bateman on six cents website thanks to hookup tackle uh, for taking care of me. Um, you guys have a great night. I'll see you guys Sunday.